What's up, guys? Derek, more plates, more dates.com. Today, I wanted to talk about something that I don't really see talked about and I found kind of interesting, and that is the effect gaining muscle has on your literal face tissue. So the easiest way to illustrate this is to just show you some before and after pictures. So for example, if we go back to the start of bodybuilders careers when they're amateurs, you'll notice when they get shredded, their faces look great, really sucked in, really you know chiseled and lean and defined. And uh, that classic death face look you get in prep when you get super lean. These guys all had great death faces. You have Dorian Yates, Phil Heath, Kai Green, solid death faces. <laughs> and as their careers progressed, you know, all these guys, I would say, should be considered mass monsters at one point. Phil Heath is probably a bit of an exception because his weight on paper perhaps doesn't reflect that. But, you know, he's obviously tried to maximize his size before and it worked against him. So I think he's kind of like crosses into that threshold of gaining more muscle than is, you know, necessary on your frame. And Dorian Yates, for example, he's a great example of what's going to happen in your face when you get gain a ton of muscle. He was one of the first guys to, you know, blow up in that sort of GH insulin era or whatever you want to call it. And his first few contests, you know, face super chiseled. You'll notice as he gets older though, and he gains more and more muscle, despite being as lean or leaner, his face continues to gain literal mass. Like it, it starts to look more bloated and fat looking, even when he's diced. I've noticed this throughout all bodybuilders as they get bigger their face reflects their gain in size almost in parallel at least in almost all cases with the exception of certain guys but typically the guys that it's not reflected in are guys that haven't crossed that threshold into like mass monster territory and if you want to argue that you know like phil heath isn't a mass monster or whatever there's you know, lots of examples out there. I'm just using him as an example of, you know, a guy whose face has morphed significantly and it's through his process of gaining a significant amount of muscle. So as Dorian gains muscle, his face gains mass in parallel. And this is irrespective of water retention, irrespective of body fat, because these guys get diced, like literally four to five percent dry on stage. And their faces still look fat. And the reason for this, I can't say I know for sure, but I think, at least I theorize that as you gain muscle everywhere, your face is also a muscle. So you gain physical tissue in parallel. Like when you gain muscle across your body, you gain it everywhere. It's not just, you know, in one place. It's not like you can spot gain on your shoulders unless, you know, you use SEO or something like that, but that's not like actual like hypertrophy. That's, you know, but anyway, that's like manual fascial stretching. That's a bit different when we're talking about like, if you gain 10 pounds of pure muscle, it gets distributed through your whole body. It's not like it goes to one area or another. So part of that is your face. And you'll notice these guys, as they gain muscle, their faces kind of grow in parallel. And Yates, the reason he's a good example is not only because he went all the way up to that bulked up face look, but he's also come all the way back down and now in his downsized, you know, older age, his face, you know, arguably looks better than it did when he was massive. Even though he's way older, he's, his face is way slimmer looking, even though he's obviously a higher body fat percentage relative to his, you know, weight. And that's just, I just think that's what's happening. And it's really interesting. And you'll see Phil Heath is a great example too. When he first started, just, you know, chiseled, diced face, sucked in you know, pretty much like really, really good looking dude, honestly. And uh, as he gains mass, you know, you go from his first contest to nationals when he gets his pro card, his first few pro appearances, all the way until his first Olympia. And then throughout his Olympias where he's attempted to play the size game with these guys who he sees as threats like Kai Green, Big Ramy, etc. And he's tried to gain mass. Obviously his gut gained size in parallel, but as he gained mass, his face noticeably chunked up, even though he'd still show up, you know, hamstrings, glutes dialed in as diced as he was in years past. But the only difference is he weighs more now and his face is massive. Even when he's diced Kai green, another great example when he was an amateur, you know, very lean aesthetic, more aesthetic face than at the end of his career, as he gains more mass, 
his face takes on a more, you know, mass bloated appearance, even though he's, you know, shredded. And when you get to the end stage of his career where he's walking around standing on stage at like, I don't even know what he weighs, like probably like 260 plus, maybe even more, 270, 280, I don't even know. But the guy's obviously, you know, gained probably like 100 pounds of muscle over his career from an amateur to being a top pro. And at the end of his career, even when he's completely just diced as hell, his face is like a big, like bloated looking block. And it's just, to me, it's, it's almost like that. I've done a video on this before, how, you know, when you take gear and you try to play this gain muscle uh, game or like, you know, the mass game or whatever you want to call it, there's sort of like a trade-off of what you're like, obviously you're going to lose. You're probably going to exacerbate your miniaturization of hair follicles and many other things. But in parallel, there's a certain threshold where gaining muscle makes your face look more masculine and better. But then there's also a threshold where when you're gaining more and taking absurd amounts of drugs to gain this muscle, that your face just starts gaining significant amounts of mass and starts to take a downswing. And I think there's definitely a fine line in terms of not pushing yourself above and beyond this, unless your dream is to, you know, compete on the Olympia stage and you have the genetics for it. To me personally, I thought it was something interesting and I haven't seen anybody make a video on it before, but there's countless examples. I'll throw some up um, in the corner here of guys who, you know, when they were amateurs and they'd show up at the show, just completely peeled faces, you know, very, very lean, um, chiseled looking. And then as they gained, you know, 50, 60 pounds more muscle throughout their careers to be competitive at a very high level, even at the same body fat percentages, their faces just have so much extra mass on them in parallel with their bodies. And it's sort of, you know, it's, I think it's another reason to not, you know, push things way above and beyond where you need to, if you're not a competitive bodybuilder, because, Gaining muscle isn't always a positive thing besides, you know, the cardiovascular stress, etc. There's a, even if you're immune to hair loss, like it plays a diminishing role on your physical face. And I don't know if a lot of guys are aware of this. I think they kind of get into a downward spiral of gaining muscle. And before they know it, their, their facial aesthetics are like completely thrown off and they, you know, don't realize why and, or they just, you know, don't care because they're so massive. It doesn't even matter to them, but just something to be aware of. I think that, uh, there's definitely a correlation between muscle and literal, you know, muscle on your face itself. And I've seen countless examples of it over the years, just as, you know, a fan and a spectator of the sport and something to keep in mind and something that uh, is kind of interesting. Anyways, thought I'd make a quick video for that uh, topic. Hope you guys enjoyed it. Please like, subscribe, check out my blog, moreplatesmoredates.com. Check me out on Instagram at moreplates underscore more dates. Talk to you guys soon.